Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we'll be doing a read aloud to driving in my car. And then we're gonna show you a really fun, cool activity that you can do with your kids that puts a spotlight on their imagination and creativity. Stay tuned until the end. During this series, we will provide you with some tips and tricks that will give you and your kids an opportunity to improve your love of reading and include it in your everyday life. So, without further ado, let's go. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Driving In My Car. My kids love to read these books. We know the songs, it helps us engage with the characters, and we love to act out the stories. Okay guys, so today we have Driving In My Car by our beloved Harry and Sana Jo. Are you guys ready to embark on this journey? Yeah! Yes! Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hello, Mary. What are you doing today? Mary is getting ready to go for a drive. First, she buckles her seatbelt. How about that? You guys know that one, right? Isla, sometimes you need to be told twice. Oh, I don't. Let's go. Let's go. Lennon, what's that say? Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> that a girl. Driving. Driving in my car. Feeling, Feeling like a star. Like a star. Down the street. You know this song. I can do it better. Down the street in my car. Great, now do it on this page. Driving. Driving, Driving in, in my car. car. Turn, Turn the, the handlebar. Bar. Speeding down the, down the street, street in, my in my car. Daily reading engages the brain by using listening skills, imagination, and critical thinking. A little bit of reading every day will give you an opportunity to exercise all of those skills and create a love of learning for life. Hurry before it gets dark. Have a fun drive, Mary. Have a fun drive, Mary. We love you. You gotta blow kisses. You gonna blow kisses to Mary? Can you can you wink at Mary? Can you show us how you wink? Show us how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. When you finish a book, go back and ask your kids if they like to act it out. Daily reading can be a safe space for them to learn, play, increase their imagination, and build confidence, particularly for young readers. Ah, look, it's the page that gives us all the tips and tricks to bring this book to life. We can get active, we can talk, and we can watch the Driving In My Car video on YouTube, and we can sing the song when we read. Bringing a book to life is an activity that can inspire the love of reading for a lifetime. And playing pretend is one of the easiest things you can do. Sometimes the hardest part about playing pretend is just coming up with the concept. But you can encourage your kids to play the characters in the story, or take on some of the scenarios that they read about. Driving in my car is a great example of this as it was adapted from the Mother Goose Club music video. Today, we're gonna play pretend and make our own version of the music video. Grab your speakers and turn on the music video and let your kids become the star of their own music video. Toy car, speaker, sunglasses, outfits, jewelry, all that type of stuff. Copy of a Driving In My Car book, and most importantly, imagination. Dad, I want to drive a car just like me when we die. Well, you might be a little young to drive a car, but I have a feeling if we use our imagination, we might be able to drive a car right here in the living room. Whoa! Whoa look at that! Go for it, guys. The mall. Thanks for joining us for our read aloud today. If you want to make your own driving in my car music video, be sure to check out our main Mother Goose Club YouTube channel for the driving in my car music video. You can find the link for the YouTube channel in the description. Also, what are some of your favorite books to read to your kids? Leave it in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Hi, I'm Ivy. 
I play Baba Sheep on the Mother Goose Club. I love doing arts and crafts, especially with the kids I babysit for, like Lucas. Hi. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a bus out of a cardboard box. Okay, now we're gonna turn this cardboard box into a bus that we can ride in. Then we can pretend to drive all around the neighborhood, picking up all our friends. This is a super creative craft that you can do at home with your child. And by the end of it, you'll have a toy that your child can use for pretend play. This encourages creativity and imagination. For this craft, you'll need a large empty cardboard box, some white, yellow, and black construction paper, glue, adult scissors, safety scissors, crayons, and four paper plates for the wheels. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. First, we're gonna cut off the bottom flaps. The cardboard's a bit tough to cut, so an adult needs to do this step. Now we're going to fold in the top flaps to make the bus sturdy. To make the windows, we're going to use white paper. We're going to cut ours in half so that it fits better on the box. When you're doing this project at home, make sure that you're letting your child make all kinds of creative decisions. The more they do themselves, the more pride they'll feel when they're done. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Sounds good. Can I help with the cutting? Sure. Here's your scissors. If you feel comfortable letting your child use safety scissors, let them help with the cutting. It exercises the small muscles in their hands and develops fine motor skills. I did it! Awesome! Now let's glue these windows on. You almost done? Uh, just my last edge. We're gonna add two pieces of paper to the front to create the windshield. And great! Okay, are you ready to glue on the windows? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna glue on the first one, right here. Look good? Uh-huh. You ready to put it in the middle? Uh-huh. Let's put it right here. Great. Now let's give this bus some headlights. We can fold the piece of paper in half, and I'm gonna draw a circle. And then I'm gonna cut it out. If your child's like Lucas and loves to help, you can have him trace the circles himself. Awesome. Wow, look at that circle. This helps them develop their hand-eye coordination. Almost done. Now let's glue the headlights on. Looks good. Awesome. To make the wipers, we're going to cut two long strips of black paper, like this. Awesome! Hey, which way do the windshield wipers go? That way. Good. Looking good. Awesome. Hey, we did it! This bus looks amazing, Lucas! Great job! But it's missing one thing. What? Well, what helps the bus move? The wheel! That's right! We're going to make them out of paper plates. We can either glue them on as is or color them however we want. Let's turn pink. That's a good choice. Now that we've glued these awesome wheels, you ready to put them on the bus? Uh-huh. Let's do it. I'll let you glue yours on first. That looks great. I'll pop mine on. 
make sure it sticks. Looks good. Hey, let's take our bus for a spin. Yeah! Come on! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Try making a bus at home with your child and let us know how it goes by posting photos or videos and hashtagging them with Mother Goose Club. As always, we love to hear from you. So type in comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. Hey. <laughs> Action. Sorry. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Can I help? <laughs> it's my fault because I was like. I went. Oh, okay, stabbing. He knew I messed up. Yeah. It exercises their fine motors. Oh, sorry. It exercises the small motors. Small muscles. It exercises their fine. It, ex it okay. Yeah. The different things. Be nice. <laughs> and develops the fine. Now let's glue these headshot. Oh my. Black street. Street black. I want to wipe your windows. I want to wipe your windows. <laughs> oh gosh. Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to play Jumping the Lily Pad. This one's going to help us with counting and addition, so let's play. The supplies you'll need for this activity are. Green felt, stickers, scissors, permanent marker, die. Now I'm gonna show you how you can create your own lily pad game. All you need to start with is a piece of green felt or cardboard or foam board or whatever you might have easy access to. And you are going to fold it in half and you are going to snip around, make a circle, cut the half circle. And of course, when you unfold it, it will be a full circle. Open it up and you'll cut out a pie piece. And now you have your lily pad. When you finish your lily pad, you'll take a permanent marker and you'll put the number and then the corresponding number of dots. This will give multiple ways for the kids to see how the number can be written or communicated. Once you have your 10 lily pads made, you just grab your die, give it a toss, you land on a number, and then they can hop right to it. All right, Lenny, you got the die. So what you do is, Lenny, since you're gonna go first, roll the die and just sort of roll it right there in the middle. There you go. How many do you see? You count them right there. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent job. So five. Let's go back to one. When you hop on your one, let's give it. Let's give one a hop. Let's make one matter. Do one. A We're gonna count. We'll count. We'll count them together while she hops. Yeah, there two. you go. That's two. Now hop to your three. 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 Now hop to your four. 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 Now hop to your five. 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 Now eye the rose and see you anywhere you can just good. Okay. Oh. That's all right. That's all right. We'll make it count. Hop to it. One, two. All right, perfect. Now, Lynn, it's your turn again. There you go. Just like that. That's, that's perfect. The number six right here. There you go. Yeah, okay. You have three leaves. Okay, leap to the nine. Leap to the nine. No, that's no, the ten. That's ten. Yeah, there you go. All right, that a girl. Okay. All right, good job. Let's see what you get, Isla. Ah, oh, okay. Now, Isla, you're back in the game, it looks like. So now, Lennon, since you're at nine, you're gonna start working backwards if you go if you go go past, okay? This game tackles a few different mathematical elements. One of the first is the concept that numbers can be communicated in a wide variety of ways. On the lily pads themselves, we have the numbers written in text. We also have representations of those numbers when we have the dots. Just toss it right there. See what you come up with. X, oh, you got the big one. Go, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent. So we're gonna hop back six. And from the eight, you're gonna hop to seven. I'll right, make sure you don't get kicked in the face. Seven. There you go. Now, Lynn. Jump, from, hop from seven. Nope, it's seven to six. You're gonna go from seven. No. <laughs> it looks like a six though. It's turned upside down. But let me show you. The difference is, check this out. Watch this. It also tells you how many dots are there too. So this is has the number six. It has six dots. You can tell the difference with this one because that one has nine dots. 
So even though it looks like a six, you can still sort of tell. You have a way to decode that. Another cool way to play with your lily pads is to take these stickers, uh, and what they call in teacher terms are visual manipulatives. You take these stickers and you have them placed to the corresponding number here. So if you see a number two here, you place two stickers on it and you're all good. So here, roll the dice. The die. <laughs> What number is that? Can you count with your fingers? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's six. So, okay. <laughs> take some stickers and put that over the dots, okay? And count them as you're doing it. One. Yeah, there you go. Can you count with me? Five, five six. six. Yay, all right, good okay. job. One of the ways we thought of that you can make the game more challenging is to do it outside. Uh, weather wouldn't permit us to do it outside today, but doing it outside gives us an opportunity to really get them physically active, and that might really up the engagement and the excitement level. Give this activity a try and let us know how it goes. Share your successes, challenges, and tips right below in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Simon says, pat your heads. Simon says, rub your bellies. Simon says, give your daddy a hug. Yeah! Hey, I'm Jesse. Did you know that playing the game Simon Says with your kids is actually really good for their brains? And it's also a fun way for them to practice self-regulation, the ability to control your behavior. This game also requires players to listen, focus, and follow directions. And if your kids are like mine, well, they can definitely use some more practice in that area. In this video, I'll show you how to play. <laughs> to play, start by choosing someone to be Simon, the leader. Simon will give commands to the other players. When the commands begin with Simon says, the other players must follow those instructions. If the command does not begin with Simon says, any player who follows it is out. All right, guys, we're ready to play. Are you yeah. sure? All right. Yeah. So, Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, touch your ears. Simon says, close your eyes. Reach down and touch your toes. Simon says, touch your nose. Simon says, move like a robot. Simon says, play the air guitar. <laughs> now freeze. Ah, uh, you're <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. When kids learn to listen carefully to each command and decide whether to follow, they're demonstrating self-regulation, which will help them do well in school. Simon says, flap your arms like a chicken. <laughs> Simon says, stand on one foot. Simon says, make a funny face. Simon says, twirl like a ballerina. All right, now bow. Simon says, touch your ears. Touch your nose. Simon says, quietly run in place. Simon says, stop. Simon says, run again. All right, let's take a little break. Ah, I got you again. <laughs> all right. You can adapt this game to play with kids of all ages. My little one, for example, may be too young to fully understand the rules of Simon Says, so when I play with him, my focus is introducing him to new words. Simon Says, touch your ears. Yeah, good job. Simon Says, touch your nose. Yeah, good job. Simon Says, smile. Simon Says, wiggle your fingers. Simon Says, Flap your arms like a chicken. Simon says dance in place. Yeah! As you can see, my kids love to play Simon Says, and I love that they get to practice their self-regulation skills. Now we want to know how you and your kids play Simon Says. Share pictures and videos by hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Add your stories in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Simon says, say goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, I'm Jesse. <laughs> Just in case you don't know, I'm Jesse. <laughs> Definitely use some.
question. All right. Question. <laughs> Simon says, get it together. <laughs> so, the ability to <laughs> the ability to control your behavior. <laughs> you guys are so good. Whoa, you just smacked me in the face. I, think I can't win. I can't win with these guys. <laughs> the ability to control your be. <laughs> <laughs> Simon says, Simon says, rub your belly. Oh, okay. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah! Are you really good for your kids' brains? No. Really good for your kids' brains? That sounds funny. Actually, really good with, really good with their brains? So you have your kids and their brains? Touch your nose. Touch your Ooh. nose. Dude, you're good. <laughs> I thought I was going to get him on that one. When kid. Wait, but <laughs> when, gosh, when kids learn, ow now, brown cow, to understand the rules of practice, there's, ah, and share, ah, and add, too young to understand, ah. if the command, ah. Simon says, let's <laughs> take a yeah, bite. It's a fun, fun it's a fun way, fun, fun, funions. <laughs> Okay, I spy with my little eye something red. Is that red card? Hi, I'm Amanda, and this is my daughter, Nola. Today we're at the flea market. It is the perfect place to play one of our very favorite games, I Spy. Are you excited? <laughs> it's a great brain-boosting activity that you can play just about anywhere with kids of all ages. Come on, we'll show you how. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, here's how you play I Spy. First, you choose one of the players to be the spy. And then the spy chooses an object silently, like say this blue globe, and then reveals the object to the other players by saying, I spy with my little eye something blue. Then the other players try to guess what the secret object is. If they're having trouble figuring it out, then the spy can give an additional hint. We'll show you how it's done. Mom, you be the spy first. Oh, all right, let's see. Hmm, let me find an object. Okay, let's start over here first. Hmm, all right, let me pick an object. Let's see. Oh, here's an important tip. Do not look directly at the object when you're giving your hints. That is a dead giveaway. All right, I have my object, cover your ears. I chose the red dye. All right, Nola, you ready? Okay, I spy with my little eye something red. Um, is it that W? It is not that W. Um, is it that red stripe around the pin? Ooh, good one, I hadn't even noticed that. No, nope, that's not what I was looking at. Is it the red dye? Ah, uh, yes, you did it! It is that red dye. And you said the right word because dice is... Two. Two, and a die is actually just one. So you got it, good job. This game is so good for kids' brains. It's not only a great way to expand their vocabularies, but it also develops their powers of observation. So Noel, you wanna play again? Yeah. Okay, I spy with my little eye something blue. Is it that blue block? It is not that cube, no. Keep going. Um, is it this toy car? Uh, no, that's not what I was looking at, although you're right, that's very blue. Try something else. Um, is it that lock? No, that's not what I was looking at. I'll give you a hint. It is something that you wear. Hmm. Oh, is it that pin? Yes, that's also called a brooch and people wear it on their shirt. Nicely done. Thank you. Yeah. Now we'll do one for you. Oh, good, okay. I spy with my little eye something golden. Something golden. Uh, is it that trophy over there? Nope. How about that necklace? Nope. Uh, is it that brush up there? Nope. Uh, the bronze shoes? Nope. All right, I give up. What is it? It's that brooch. Ah, you learned that word before. Good job. 
You can adapt this game to play with kids of all different skill levels. When Nola was little, I just asked her to point to an object of a certain color. All that matters is that you're making kids think about their surroundings and exposing them to new words. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type any comments into the box below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos. Bye. <laughs> Stop touching me. All right, three. Oh yeah, <laughs> I did it, I'm awesome, I did it. Oh, hello. I look like a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs>
What do you, what are you, what's one thing you're thankful for? What's the first thing you're thankful for? Having a mom and dad. Mom and dad. And sister and brother. Mom and dad. And brother and sister. All right, so we're gonna turn the wheel and we're gonna put brother and sister. And what else are you thankful for then? I'm thankful for a house. For a house. I'm thankful for toys. For toys. Toys are so cool. I'm thankful for a couch. You're thankful for a couch? Yeah. Okay. I'm thankful for a mirror. A mirror. A mirror so you can see. If, if you're pretty. Oh wow! Well, Money. I can I can tell you with or without a mirror that you are absolutely beautiful. Food is meant to be shared, right? So you may want to gather around with some real pie and share your gratitude pie. It's a great opportunity to discuss some of the things that are important for you and your kids, and some of the things you have to be thankful for. Isla, I want you to hold on to Lennon's pie, and if you may, if I will, you pass me your pie, please. Pardon my reach, and. Lennon, I want you to hold on to Isla's pie. And we're gonna find out what each other have to be thankful for uh, this Thanksgiving. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ready? One, two, three. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Okay, so now, so you're gonna read one of what uh, Lennon is thankful for. Lennon is thankful for a couch. You're thankful for the couch? Now tell me what you like about the couch. We got a couple of couches here. What do you like to do on the couch? Uh, do you like to kick your le legs up? What do you like to do? What do you like to do on the couch? No, I like to jump on the couch and fight. <laughs> she um, likes, who, who, who are you fighting on the couch? Lachlan, probably. Lachlan. This activity is a great way to exercise kids' reading and writing skills. Some of the things they are grateful for might not be as familiar when they see them. So this gives you an opportunity to really slow down, think about some of those words, maybe even sound them out, so they have an opportunity to exercise some of those early literacy skills. Now that right there is the word zoo. That's Z-O-O. -O. When you see two O's together, zoo. that's right. When you see two O's together, it makes an ooh sound. You say ooh. That's right. Now, so siblings, Isla, why are you thankful for these other little people that live with you? Because they can love on me and they're, and, and they're always warm in my heart. Everybody group hug, group hug, group hug. That was <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh man. This was a great activity for our souls and our stomachs. What are you grateful for? We wanna hear about it in the comments. We want you to know that we're grateful for you Thanks for watching and happy Thanksgiving. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make Mother Goose Club character cupcakes, which are great for kids' birthday parties. <laughs> Today, I'm going to make Eep, Teddy, and Baba cupcakes. The materials you need are vanilla and chocolate cupcakes, chocolate and vanilla frosting, vanilla wafer cookies, assorted candies for ears and bows, food coloring, a pint-sized glass, a knife, a spoon, spatula, scissors, and baggies in gallon and sandwich sizes. Let's start with our Eat the Mouse cupcake. I used a store-bought vanilla frosting that I added one teaspoon of blue food coloring to and whisked. You could also use a homemade buttercream. Now take your large plastic baggie and put one corner down in the bottom of your cup. Fold the bag open over the edges of the cup. Now scoop in your blue frosting until it's full. Now lift your bag out, squeeze out the air, and zip the bag shut. Squeeze the frosting down to the bottom corner of the bag. and then snip the end off. Now you have a piping bag. Starting on the edge of the cupcake, squeeze gently in a spiral motion until you reach the center of the cupcake. To make the face, I filled two baggies, one with black frosting and one with white frosting. Put a vanilla wafer cookie on your counter. 
Using your black frosting, draw little eyebrows, eyes, a nose, and a mouth. This may take a couple of practice cookies. Use your white to add a little sparkle to his eye. Now take your cookie and place it in the center of your cupcake. To make the ears, cut a chocolate circle in half and place them where Eep's ears would go. Now trace over the chocolate with your blue frosting. And finish them with two blue candies. And there's Eep. For Teddy, I'm using a chocolate cupcake. I filled a bag with chocolate frosting like I did for Eep. And we start at the edge and work our way to the center. Then we place our cookie face. And our chocolate circle ears. Trace over the ears with the chocolate frosting. For her special bow, I'll add two blue candy-covered chocolates. And there's Teddy. Now let's make Baba. For Baba, I'm using a vanilla cupcake and vanilla frosting that I added eight drops of red and two drops of blue into. We're gonna start by making a series of dots around the edge of the cupcake. Then using your spoon, smear each dot towards the center of the cupcake. Now we're going to make a second row of dots, just like the first. Now let's add our cookie face. And two purple chocolate covered candies for ears. And there's Baba. You can also simply spread the frosting on using a spreader like this, but a regular butter knife will also work. Then add your cookie face and your chocolate candies, and it's just as cute. These cupcakes are the perfect birthday party treat for your little Mother Goose Club fan. Share photos of the Mother Goose Club goodies you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe! <laughs> in this video, we're going to show you how to make a delicious rainbow fruit snack that's good for your body and your brain. <laughs> Hi, I'm Noah, and this is my uncle Brandon. We're making rainbow fruit snacks. This is more than just a healthy snack. It's also a fun and brain-boosting activity. When kids copy a pattern, like the colors in the rainbow, they get smarter at math. And when they put fruit on skewers, they strengthen finger muscles, which they need for writing. To make these snacks, you'll need wooden skewers, a couple of plates, a large plate or platter to build the rainbow on, and fruit. You could choose whatever fruits you like. Just pick one for each color. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Here's what we chose. 
strawberries for red, orange slices for orange, pineapple chunks for yellow, green grapes, blueberries, and purple grapes. Here's a plate and some skewers. They have sharp points, so be very careful. Which color comes first in the rainbow? Red, so we should start with the strawberries. Now we carefully poke the skewer through. The safest way is to lay the fruit on the plate and poke the skewer down. Then, push the fruit up. Great! Now what color comes after red? Orange! Next comes yellow. Now green! Next we'll do blueberries for blue. They're kind of small, so let's use three. What's our last color? Purple! Great job! Let's put them on the big plate and make some more. <laughs> Gonna make red strawberries for the rainbow. What's your favorite fruit? I like grapes. What about you? Mm, I have to go with pi pineapple and oranges. One, three. One more. This is fun. I can't wait to eat some. Noah, why do you think fruits are different colors? I think fruits are different colors because different fruits with different colors have different vitamins. Mmm, that's a good answer. Mmm, like blueberries bring me blueberry happiness. Right, right. Not sadness, although they're blue. Let's make a double rainbow. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. I say beautiful. Uh, can we all with these blueberries here? Yes. Wolf it. Yeah, wolf it. Great. Aww. Look, we made a fruit rainbow. Yum! Now comes the best part. Let's eat! Yes! Just remember that grapes and other large chunks of fruit can be choking hazards for young children. So it's best to cut the fruit pieces small and to cut the grapes in half before eating. Perfect pineapples. Wanna take oh. a bowl. I love grapes. Show other Mother Goose Club fans your rainbow snacks. Hashtag photos and videos Mother Goose Club. And we listen to all your feedback, so please comment below. Bye! I'm gonna enjoy this. We'll bust the mood. And the move and, <laughs> and action. So it's great. Sorry. And to cut the grapes in halves. You got it. It's not even a word. So it's bet. Ah. You got this. With him. <laughs> We're in this guy. Okay. Are they still like cameraing me? So I still have to smile. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? Why are you upset? Nobody. Wait. Did I skip anything? No. Really? <laughs> I am so... Here we go, looking at the camera, so we're still rolling, and... I got a little distraction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Goose Club Playhouse.